Welcome to the very first episode of Estanza Tattoo Removal News, your monthly update on all things tattoos, tattoo removal, laser technology, and more. I'm Hannah Barling, the content and brand marketing manager for Estanza Laser, and today I've got Brian Hassenbauer with me. Hello, thanks Hannah. Yes, I'm uh, Brian Hassenbauer, VP of Marketing at Estanza Laser, and I'm really excited about this project and this show that we're gonna be doing on a monthly basis. So we can talk to you, our clients, our prospective clients, about the tattoo removal industry, the business, and what we have going on here. So can't wait to get going. Absolutely, thanks for tuning in today. So a lot of people ask us how Estanza got started. Well, we actually started off as a training company for laser tattoo removal, and we saw an increasing need for people that wanted to not just get training, but also people that wanted to buy a laser. So we actually transitioned from a solely training school into a laser company where we sell many types of aesthetic lasers now. Awesome, yeah, so now we help people launch and grow successful aesthetic practices, which is very exciting to see um, and help those people grow their businesses and, and start new careers or expand their careers. Um, at Estanza, you know, we like to say that we do more than just sell lasers, we change lives. Um, so by offering that award-winning technology, service, support, um, marketing strategies, tattoo removal businesses thrive and we love being with them every step of the way. What can you expect from these shows that we're gonna do on a monthly basis? That's why we're here to talk to you about this. So we're gonna share a lot of different things, but it's gonna be a variety of stories, trending topics, like what Pete Davidson is doing with his tattoos on a monthly basis and how his relationship with Ariana Grande is going. No, not really. Wait, just kidding. Wrong celebrity. Just kidding. <laughs> Or he's with her now. Uh, it's a Kardashian. Oh, no. Kardashian, yes, whatever. Yes, I can't changed. keep all those people straight. <laughs> I can get keep tattoos straight though, and that's what we'll talk about. So, and we'll also get into like, how do you run a successful laser tattoo removal business? Because it's not just about buying an awesome Estanza laser and opening your doors. There's a lot of marketing, a lot of things you need to do to set the stage for success. So we'll be talking about that. And we want to give that information to not just our clients, we want to give it to the world um, and welcome everyone into our Estanza family. What do you think about that? I love it. I am especially excited to share everything that we do here, um, all of what we've learned and our um, you know, industry strategies that we can share with the world. And you know, we work with a wide variety of clients, whether it's tattoo artists looking to expand their studios um, to provide better cover-ups when people come in and have those very specific design requests. Um, we also work with, maybe it's a med spa owner who's looking to expand and add an additional service, or entrepreneurs. We love working with entrepreneurs and helping them really start from the ground up and see that growth along the journey. Um, so we will be sharing plenty of that and you'll hear it straight from the source from, from some of our folks that we work with as well. Yeah, and one thing that we want to talk about and highlight today are some of those frequently asked questions and mm. tattoo removal myths. Because a lot of people think it's like witchcraft and you just like put some cream on you <laughs> and they'll just disappear and they're on the top level of your skin. But there's a lot of things that people ask about tattoo removal, right? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So we're going to talk about some of those today. like. Do I get one treatment and I'm done? Or how many treatments and stuff like that? I wish it was that simple. It is not actually a one and done process. Um, the tattoo removal journey is exciting, um, but it varies from person to person. There are several factors that go into that. Um, so we actually have a blog that we've put together with these seven most frequently asked questions. Seven. <laughs> and there are more, but the seven most frequently asked ones, and um, we would love to share that information with you. So let's dive on in. So you said it's not like magic. I wish. And it's not just one time you just get a treatment and you're done, right? Exactly. So what's the average treatment? How do you know? How do you figure it out? Yeah, great question. Usually the first question people ask. Um, it does vary from person to person. Factors like the color of the ink, the depth of the tattoo itself, um, what skin type you have. Um, all of these are factored into how many sessions and how long that journey actually is. Um, so that being said, the average number of sessions for a complete removal is between five and 12. 
Um, and then if you're looking for just a fade down for a cover up, so you want some new ink on top, um, that's maybe three to four sessions to get it nicely faded that you can put a new tattoo on top of that. True. And we actually have a really cool blog post and it's about the Kirby Decide scale, which basically breaks it down into a kind of a grid of, you know, um, what skin type, how old the tattoo is, and all these different factors that give you a number to tell you actually how many treatments. So search on our blog, Kirby Decide scale, and you'll probably find that pretty easily to help you out. Absolutely, absolutely. And we would love to share a few before and afters with you so you can see for yourself um, what it will look like. So as you can see here on the screen, um, this one image shows a before, a during, and then the um, final process with the cover up on top. That is a very common um, type of you know treatment that people get for removal because they do want new art on top. Um, and then we also have some to show you that are complete removal. So Brian, what do you think of, of this one up here? Looks pretty good. I mean, can't even tell it's there, which is great. So people can come back like every day for like what, six weeks and get it done? <laughs> like every day over okay. the six weeks or what, what's the deal? Uh, great question again. Um, I, again, I wish it was, it was that simple and, and that magical, um, but no, you wanna give that skin and time to heal and then the, the fading process to naturally happen. Um, so you do want to wait a minimum of six weeks between sessions just to ensure that you are allowing that natural fading process to occur. Um, you know, it's, it's not quite the same for everyone, but a minimum of six weeks for waiting. Um, and I think we actually have a few experts in house who can give us even more details about how the uh, laser wavelengths and how it targets the ink work. So what are, what are those people called? Can we share that with them or? The science guys, cause it's science not magic. Absolutely. Check it out. Let's hear it from them. Josh from Astanza Laser, and I'm here to help explain why we use different wavelengths of light to attack different pigments in a tattoo. We use 1064, 694, and 532, and they affect, you know what? Follow me to the lab and I'll show you. So we're here today with Jordan Hall, one of our biomedical engineers at Sans Laser, and he's gonna explain to you why we use three different wavelengths specifically to target all colors of ink. Say, Jordan? Hello, my name is Jordan. And we're gonna talk a little bit about absorption today. First, we need to talk about why we see certain things as certain colors. The reason that we see this balloon as a pinkish red color is because it absorbs all other wavelengths of light and reflects that pink and red color back to our eyes. Same thing with turquoise, same thing with all other colors that you see. So, when we're trying to target the ink in our skin during tattoo removal, we need to use the right wavelengths to match the right color of the ink. So, first, we're gonna try to pop this black balloon. Here's our model. The balloon is gonna represent the ink pigment, and the clear balloon on top is going to represent all the stuff that the laser has to pass through to get down to the pigment all the structures in the skin that has to go through to get to the thing that we want to get. So Jordan is now going to show us how the use of different wavelengths of light are going to affect the balloons differently, and hopefully pop them all. Take it away, Jordan. Thanks, Josh. All right. So first, we got to get on our safety glasses. All right. I'm going to get myself situated. So. When we're trying to uh, break up black ink in the skin, the wavelength that we use is 1064. Now black is actually a kind of a special case. Um, black is actually the absorption of all wavelengths of light, um, instead of, and it reflects nothing back, okay? So, when we want to pop black, we go to 1064, we get our laser ready. Three, two, one. Pop it very easily. All right, so we pop 1064 very easily. Now, 1064 is great for popping black, but it's not going to be quite as good for popping red because it's such a long wavelength. It doesn't catch red quite as much, and it's not absorbed as heavily. Remember, red things absorb all other wavelengths and reflect red back. So, let's take a look and try to pop this one with 1064, just like we did with the black. Uh, 
Alright. Three, two, one. No pop, no confetti. Very disappointing on the whole. Now, let's switch to a more appropriate wavelength and try to pop it with that. So, in this machine, we can change to 532. Now, when we're targeting red ink inside the skin, we always use 532 first because it works very heavily with red. Let's see how it does on the blue. Three, two, one. It's pretty great. Now let's talk about our teal blue. Teal is going to be just like 532, and that's going to absorb some stuff, and it's going to reflect some stuff. Now, we're going to try it with 1064, but we know 1064 is a pretty safe wavelength, so I'm not super hopeful that it's going to pop. Let's give it a try anyway. All right, three, two, one. Nothing. I'm going to need some help to get this one to pop. Josh, come here. Thanks, man. <laughs> okay. So, as Jordan was saying, if we want to get a teal balloon to pop, we use kind of a green light to pop red, so we're going to use a red light to pop green, or blue. My glasses on make this look blue. When you want to do that, we have a ruby laser which fires at 694, which, to your eye, is definitely red. Everybody want to put your new special goggles on? For the ruby laser? Alrighty. Think I'm gonna get it? I think you're gonna get it. All right. Three. It works. Thanks, Jordan. That was fun. Appreciate you teaching us all about wavelengths and absorption. Absolutely, Josh. All right, we'll see you back in the studio. Wow, that was a pretty good video. Those science guys are amazing. You can tell they went to pretty good college and learned a lot about science. Absolutely. Kind of makes me want to get a balloon myself and give it a shot. <laughs> oh goodness. Just kidding. Let's leave that to the experts. <laughs> yeah. Don't try this one at home, kids. <laughs> Great point. So you folks watching out there, if you want to learn about lasers and figure out how all this stuff works and how to treat someone um, with a tattoo removal laser, just come on to New Look Laser College and you can learn all that within a two day course or you can purchase a laser from Estanza and then you can fire the laser as much as you want Absolutely. as long as you're certified. We'll train you on site too. There you go. All right, so now that we have learned about the science and technology about how these lasers work, um, where to find more information about getting certified yourself, I'd love to hear from some of our practitioners in the, um, you know, the Estanza family and what they, what they do with these services. Yeah, so after you know someone does purchase a laser from Estanza or it goes to New Look Laser College, they typically will start their own business. And um, we have a lot of tattoo shops we work with, and that's one of our favorite um, clientele. And one of our recent clients is Eden Body Arts in Dallas, Texas. And they have an awesome tattoo shop that doesn't look like the tattoo shop that your grandma went to <laughs> to get that heart or the, you know, Texas boot type. Thing. Yep. So check it out. This is Eden Body Arts and Colton. Awesome. I'd love to see it. Let's pull it up.
a super neat space. You weren't kidding when you said that it was totally different than what our grandma or mom used to go get their tattoos done at. Um, I really love how they focus on that holistic experience for their clientele and from start to finish, you know, first impressions matter. And, and I just really love that they could take that approach with their, with their studio and their removal services. That's true. And first impressions do matter. And we've got an impression that we want to make with you guys. And that's watching our upcoming webinar. Oh, that's right. Oh my gosh, I almost forgot. Yeah. We do have an upcoming webinar. It will be February 23rd at noon central time. And it is called the five key steps to successfully launching your aesthetic laser business. That's true. And we have this cool thing. It's called a QR code that you can just scan and you can actually register for it. And don't worry if you're watching this after February because you can just scan the QR code still and the webinar will still be there, but then it won't be live, it'll be recorded. Yeah, and that recording will go directly to your inbox. So we'd love for you to tune into that one and learn how you can successfully launch a laser business. In that same vein, we have dozens of other aesthetic resources for you. Um, we have a whole library actually. Um, so not all the secrets to the sauce for this industry here, um, but we do share plenty of information on that page. Um, so here's another handy dandy QR code for you to scan. Check out that FAQs blog we mentioned, um, see our upcoming webinars, download some old webinars, um, plenty of information for you there um, because we are passionate about sharing that with you. So after you check that aesthetic resources library out, um, how could they see us after that? How do they keep in touch? That's a great question. So we're on Facebook, we're on Instagram. You can subscribe via YouTube, wherever that little subscribe button is. <laughs> okay, um, or definitely there. subscribe to our blog, wherever that thing is. <laughs> uh, but just keep in touch with us. You know, we definitely want to hear from you and, you know, ask questions and, you know, comment. Absolutely. Share, share more far and wide, and we would love for you to tune in next time. So until then, Hannah Barling, Estanza Laser. Brian Hassenbauer, Estanza Laser. Hey! <laughs> Thanks for tuning in, guys. See you next time. All right. Bye.